All right. I think we're live. All right. Welcome, everyone. All right. Uh, we're going to do two crafts today. I'm really excited. Uh, one is super easy, and the other one is kind of like origami. Um, I'll give everyone a moment to sign on. Um, make sure you've got your toilet paper roll. I know it's a, the end of a hot commodity, you know. Uh, we need our glue or our glue stick. We've got a piece of paper, your scissors or your kitchen shears, like I have. And then I don't think I said a ruler, but if you have a ruler, why don't you go get that? Um, a ruler isn't necessary, but it will help you make more even uh, cuts. So if you've got a ruler, go get that now. I think I forgot to put that. Um, if you're there, you can say hi or give a like, a little something so I know you're there. Um, and then I said another piece of paper, so I just have white. Um, we'll see what happens with this. Uh, I have a craft planned, but I am also trying to see where it takes me in the creative realm. So we'll see what happens. But let's go ahead and find our toilet paper roll, and then we'll need one piece of paper. Then we've got our scissors and a glue stick. And then if you've got a pen, oh, a pen and a ruler, this will make uh, your cuts on your toilet paper roll a little bit more even. So make sure you've got all of that. And we're actually going to start with toilet paper roll, ruler, and pen. All right, so I'm going to get this going. Uh, what we want to start with is we're going to take our ruler, find our toilet paper roll, and put it just in line. And I want to make, let's make um, quarter of an inch cuts. So I'm going to do a quarter of an inch markings all the way down, trying to make it super flat. So just, I'm just going to do a little dot, quarter of an inch, all the way down. Yeah. All right. If you're there, you can give a little like, a little thumbs up. Or if you're busy marking, keep marking. Okay. All right, so I've just made little dots on my toilet paper roll, just like that. Now I'm done with the ruler. I'm done with my pen. That's all we used up for. Find your scissors. And on each of the little marks, we're actually going to cut. Hi, Mom. We're going to cut all the way through on each of those dots. Now, it is kind of difficult to cut all the way through without uh, creasing your roll. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to pre-crease it. We want to have little creases. Um, so I'm just going to kind of pinch. I'm going to pinch where my dots are and go all the way down to pre-crease this. So I've got kind of this shape happening, crease all the way down. Okay. Now that we've creased, we've kind of got a good place to start. Find your scissors. The thinner your scissors are, like uh, actual crafting scissors, you'll have an easier time with this. The kitchen shears are a little thicker, so it's hard to get through. But I'm going to go on anyway. And I like to do just a little snippet. Just a little snippet right in the beginning. Don't go all the way through right away. Just a little snippet. And I think that we should do those little snippets all the way down to give ourselves a good mark so that we don't accidentally veer off and cross over our pants. So just a little snippet right at those dots. These kitchen shears don't like a, they don't like to cut at the tip of the, the, the scissor. It's okay. All right, it's gonna take a minute cutting all these. So I'm gonna start talking. So this weekend, this past week, have been uh, historic to say the least. There have been riots in all 50 states now. 
protests, peaceful protests, um, as well as less peaceful protests, as well as less peaceful responses from the police. So it's really, it's, it's crazy to see that happening outside. I'm choosing to not participate in the physical protest because I am still nervous about the coronavirus and I don't want to um, get infected. So uh, I chose to donate, donate money online to NAACP, their, um, uh, what is it, their financial criminal justice section. So that's what I did to support. Um, you could probably see the little black box that I posted on Instagram. Okay, so now that I've done all the snippets, I'm going to go all the way through. Yeah, so that black box that you might have seen on Instagram or Facebook, that is something that we are, we um, people, are posting to show that, you know, right now is not about us. It's about our black brothers and sisters who need the support that they can get um, and how we need to make sure that equality is recognized and racism is recognized and put to an end as much as we can. Um, so that black box is to be kind of a moment of silence. I know somebody called me out for saying that having that black box is meaningless, but I really think that it does show that you are trying to put, at least you're thinking about other people, you're thinking about the people in need. Um, so yes, you can post black box, but also I encourage everyone to donate. Um, you know, put your money where your mouth is. <laughs> Help everyone out if you've got the means. Or even just $5, it would be a helpful thing to do. Yeah, I'm in Austin, Texas right now, and um, the riots are very real here. Outside the window, I saw, you know, a dumpster on fire. I saw people on the highway and right next to the highway. Um, I didn't see the looting, perhaps, but I went down to the street and I saw all the stores that were busted up and boarded up, um, as well as all of the people peacefully with, with signs. And I saw people doing good things and questionable things all over the place. So it is just insane to see everything happening from the safe distance from the window. <laughs> all right. Um, I got one. Okay, so now that that awareness is spread, I feel as though I can continue on peacefully. Um, so now we've got all of our creased uh, rings. So we've got quite a few of these creased rings going on. So now it's time to get out your glue, and I'm going to show you two different ways to do this. Um, I guess I'll show you the final product. Ta-da! Something like this. Just This is more of a um, it's not really something that you would want to like hang up on your fridge unless you're very proud of it. It's more to give you an idea of what to do um, for other events if you need to make like a display, like a background or something. So this is just a little fun thing to do with your hands. Uh, so we want to first take two of our rings and we're going to glue the edge like that, the edge of one, and then stick that to the edge of another. Now, if you've got a glue gun, that would be super helpful because it would dry really fast. But we're just kind of gluing them together like this. And then we're going to keep doing that. Find the next one, glue to the edge, and put it together. And just pinch, pinch to get get them together. Now be really gentle with the ones that you've already done because glue sticks, in my experience, have never been super reliable. Um, you know, they get the job done, but they don't dry incredibly strong. Okay, so we've got three, and it kind of looks like a lotus. It's very fun. Okay, and get the next one. Glue the edge and stick it on. 
You can do this um, like on a table on a flat surface to get them lined up or if you find that that doesn't help, kind of line them up vertically to get them nice and lined. So that's four. Do the next one. Now I only did five on my example. Um, you can always do more. You can do an entire wreath going all the way around. I definitely have seen that um, as an option. I think we might, we might do one of each. So instead of doing three on the paper, we might do two and one going all the way around. I don't know. I haven't decided. Let's, let's just imagine what the fifth one would be. Oh, that would be pretty. It looks more like a snowflake. Let's do, let's do one more, because why not? So this time we've got to glue both sides. One edge, flip it over, and do the other edge, and stick it between the two, lining it up so the edges meet, sticking it together. Look like this. All right, so put that down, put that off to the side. We're going to do another one. All right, so we've got one. I like to have the more pinched side be the tip of the petal because I think it's a really pretty line. And then the more open side be towards the, in, the inside of the flower. Keep pinching. So we've got one. Another one. I feel like I should talk about something else. Mm -hmm. I finished book five of Harry Potter. I can't remember when I finished it, but in case you didn't know, it's very exciting. I finished it. So that is definitely something to celebrate. We might, I don't know, see if maybe our next craft has something to do with that. It doesn't have to, but I think it'd be fun if it does. Okay, so right now we've got four. In my examples, I did five. I want to do, let's see if I can do one with four and then one with five. So let's be done with this one, be done with the four, put that one down. And then go to do the fifth one. one two, three, four. Oh, wait, I have two left over. <gasps> All right, let's go on to the fifth one. And then we'll see where it takes us. Stick it on. Topics, topical conversation. Um, oh, in one of my interview questions with my pen pal, my dancer pen pal, she asked me where dance has taken me, like, um, in the world, if it has allowed me to travel, and that's a really exciting question for me because the answer is yes, it has. Um, I've traveled a couple of different places. The first place I traveled to was uh, Venezuela, actually. I traveled to Venezuela to train with Nina Novak and um, Martha, Martha, Gongos. Martha Gongos is someone I went to summer camp with, um, Gomez, Martha Gomez. So I went to Venezuela to train with them and that was so much fun. That was the first time I've been, to, okay, first and only time I've been to South America. Um, that was incredible. We went to Caracas. We went to the island of Margarita, and it was beautiful. I wish I could go back, but um, maybe when the politics are a little bit better. <laughs> uh, and then I've also been able to travel um, a couple of different places for summer intensives. Uh, my first summer intensive was in Tivoli, New York, which is kind of upstate New York. Yeah, uh, Caracas, yeah. Um, I trained with Nina Novak there. 
Um, we went all the way up onto like the mountain. Nina's house, it's really cool, Nina's house is connected to her studio. And so you would sleep in her house and like walk up the stairs and be in her studio. It was really cool. Um, and then we took this, we took this really small plane to the island of Margarita. And I don't know if you know what a, a centipede, like our centipedes are like this big and then tropical centipedes are like this big and they have an exoskeleton. So on this little airplane in, um, in this, you know, foreign place to us, this tropical centipede in the airport fell from the ceiling onto my friend's mom's shoulder. And she was wearing like a bare shoulder dress and it landed on her and it was crawling all around. And it was this huge scene in the airport. Eventually my teacher, um, he stomped, I think he stomped, no, or one of the locals stomped on this tropical centipede to kill it so that, you know, we could resume what we were doing. But oh my gosh, it was insane. I've never in my life have seen a tropical centipede let alone have it land on someone's shoulder. It looked like I was in a horror movie. Like I, mm. but I would go back. It was so fun. So that was uh, Caracas. Um, that was when I was in seventh grade. Yeah, so it was a long time ago, but it was an unforgettable experience. Okay, so right now I've got one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four, five, six. So you can decide, you know, which one you think looks best or something like that. All right. Finding my piece of paper. I'm going to, again, take my glue stick. And this is kind of tricky. My glue stick is kind of all beaten up now. But if you take one of your flowers and just go along the edge, um, you can kind of go like in the middle a little bit, um, get around there. And just kind of find as much glue on there as you can and then go ahead and stick it right on your paper um, again a glue gun is significantly easier to use for this uh, I'm gonna use a little bit more you really kind of have to fuddle with it is that a word fuddle? I don't know. move with it to get it to move and groove to how you want and you just kind of Stick it down in there and hope it stays. So we've got one right there. And then we take our next one. I'm gonna do the five. I'm gonna do the five one. I'm gonna put that on my paper. The other method I did for this is that I, this one I glued on afterwards, like what we're doing now, and then these two I glued each individual petal. I put some on there and I stuck it right to the paper. So you can do it either way. And I actually think this would be really pretty. If you know those shadow boxes, if you put um, a piece of paper in a shadow box and then put the rings on there so it has this depth going on. I think that would be really pretty. In one of my jobs, I have to like identify a bunch of objects and one of them is a shadow box. So I'm very familiar with the nine by nine shadow box. And the other one is I think 11 by 14. That's on, which one? That's on Michaels, yeah. Rep that Michaels. So when you place it down, you can either place it down with your um, petals together or you can separate them a little bit. I think that when you separate them, it gives a nice little open blossoming effect. So I'm just pressing that on, nice and firm. Okay, let me do that to the last one. So more places that I've traveled, um, I've gone to, well, I've been to Kansas City for their summer program. So that was one other place that I've been. So that was what, Kansas City, New York. Okay, my only summer intensives have been in Kansas City and New York. Um, for New York, I did American Ballet Theater, their uh, New York City summer program. Um, <clears throat> so I've done that means at Tivoli and then the one in New York City. There we go. One, two, all right. Uh, find your scissors. You should have two petals left over if you did the same numbers I did. And I'm just going to cut them to have two 
two pieces like this, right? Two pieces. And then take one side, run it up and down your glue stick, and stick it right to the page where you might find the stem. For example, I'm gonna move the stick for a second. For example, like this. Nice little stem. Um, oh, and then I've also traveled for auditions. So I actually was really surprised at the number of places that I've moved around and flown to just for an audition. Like, why would I ever need to go to um, single place, single place? I would say Nashville, but that one was canceled because of coronavirus. I was going to go to Nashville. Didn't work out. I was gonna go to Memphis. Didn't work out. Coronavirus. Um, but yeah, so like I went to Chicago two years ago, two years ago, and I met up with my grandma, because she lives there, and we had a great day together, all because I wanted to audition. They had an audition in Chicago, so I went and I got to spend the day with her. It was amazing. We went to the zoo, and yeah, it was great. Okay, so I put a second stem on there. So I have stem number one and stem number two. This one is completely closed, but you can definitely put a stem on that one. I've got one last petal. Um, yeah, let's use, let's use one over here and then I'm gonna do something else with the other side. So take that last one, stick it on, push it down, wait, okay. So now each of our flowers has a stem. Then with this last one, I'm gonna cut this one in half, apply glue to the one side. And now what I'm gonna do is on this shortest one, or the one with the fewer petals, I'm going to place it, oh, okay. Let's be not a dangerous one. Let's put it down here. Okay. So I placed it right there so it looks kind of like a leaf. I think that would be a fun way to go about it. So there we are. We've got a little bit, one last left one. Should we put it on? Yeah, let's put it on. Why waste, you know, this much cardboard, this much toilet paper roll? This is like the discards of the bar of gold. Actually, I'm running out of toilet paper and I'm a little nervous. To find some more. Okay, I'm putting this last stem on directly onto, I'm doing this on five petal flower. It looks a little bit like this. So this is, here I'll show my other one. Dun, da, da, da. This is a fun little craft to do. Um, get your eyes off your screen. Use your toilet paper roll, you know, things that you already have in your house. Assuming you have a glue stick in your house. Okay, so that was really fun. Now we're gonna do the last one, which is a little bit of origami. No glue. Origami does not need glue. Put that away. Um, scissors and paper. So what we're gonna do is fold this to make a square, which in one of my previous videos I showed you, where we're folding edge to edge, I'm doing this backwards, but edge to edge, and so we've got this um, kind of rectangle left over. So why don't you fold that over? Really make sure the edges line up. The more precise you are, the more perfect your box will be. Okay. So kind of like this. Take your scissors, and we're going to cut off this rectangle. So just go ahead and follow the line all the way down. All the way, all the way, and okay. We don't need this, we need to discard this. Now we've got square with one crease. Go ahead and I'm going to put this down. We're going to take this corner and fold it up to reach 
the crease and we want this to be flat. So push that down. We want these two to be parallel, right? Parallel here to here. So parallel and then fold one more time over, making sure everything fits. So we've got this situation. Now it's kind of hard to see with the white. Okay, so we've got one fold and two folds. Then we're going to, okay, I'm putting the camera back down. <laughs> we're going to take this side and bring it up to meet the corner so it lines up. There. And then do the same thing to the other side. more. Okay. I'm using construction paper so it's a little thick, it's a little difficult to work with, but nonetheless. There you go. Now, okay, we're going to fold our paper down. So we just did two, we just did two up to the top, just like that, right? Up to the top. And now we're going to fold one corner down. So we've done this, this action, and then crease that. Do the same thing to the other side, down and crease all the way. Okay, so we've got this shape. Now folding the opposite way, we're going to tuck inward and down. And then we tuck inward and down. So we've created this little shape here, just like that. And at this point, this can be a couple different things. So just this little bit right here, in my book, I have my book. Actually, my planner. My planner is so cute. Do you see this? They're little cats with my name on it. I love my planner. Okay, so if you've got a book or a magazine or a, a cookbook even, this would be a great little page marker. So if you take this, you can slide it on down and then you have your page marker, just like that. Then you can decorate the outside. Um, I've seen a couple different things like little animals, with some stickers on there. But yes, a little page marker just like that. Or what you could do, which I thought would be pretty fun, is if you happen to have another piece of paper, you can. I'm gonna use I'm gonna use a screen paper. I, I made a little example here, but I'm gonna use this and just cut it out to give you kind of an example of something else that you can do. Um, I'm going to make, here, I'm just going to do a quick little cutout. You're be like, whoa, I didn't even think of that. Watch. Okay. Just do a little cutout here. What could this be turning into? I don't know. Let's do some triangle cuts. Love me some triangle cuts. Triangle cuts are the best. They're the easiest. So fun, so fab. Okay, so little triangle cuts. And then you can glue it to the inside and make, okay, this is kind of, needs to be more centered. You can make like a little, uh, I think they're called, they're just like plant wall hangers, wall holders. And so you can, you can use a paper. If you happen to have those fake succulents, you can stick them in. And it's just like a little holder for anything that you want. If you want to like put it on a wall, oh, say you want to put it on a wall, maybe tack it to a wall because you need somewhere to hold your glue stick. Or if you want somewhere to hold your pen, depending on, I don't know how big your square is, um, some paper clips, uh, just like a little wall organizer, it would be perfect for like that. So a wall organizer sticks 
some stuff in there. Or hair ties, stick it on a bulletin board. I used to have a bulletin board when I was growing up. That would be perfect for that. Um, so I think I mentioned Harry Potter earlier because I wasn't sure if I wanted to turn this into like a Harry Potter theme um, book page holder. Brilliant. Yes, mother. Brilliant. Who would have thought? Who would have thought of this craft? So I think just for the fun of it, I'm going to do, I'm going to attempt, I have this red piece of paper here, and I'm going to attempt to cut out like a little tie and then put like a little scar on here. I think that would be super cute. Let's do, okay, so I'm going to do this, and I'm imagining like a Spongebob tie right now. I don't know why, because it's the only tie I know of. Perfect. Amazing. I don't even wear ties and I know how to draw a tie. This is more for my entertainment. If you want to decorate, I know I said markers on the uh, little thing. So if you've got markers and you want to decorate, feel free. Go ahead. It would make me so happy. But I'm going to make a Harry Potter themed um, bookmark. Book bookmark? Bookmark, yeah. Page holder, it's like dog tagging without the damage. Okay, so I made a little tie. I think that's what ties look like. <laughs> and then what you can do is you can put it like in the middle or, or you can turn it around and this can be his hat. Oh my gosh, I'm getting excited. Where's my glue stick? Okay. Let's get this glue done. Let's do, let's do a little tie right there. And then I'm gonna do a little lightning bolt. Where should I draw his hat? I'm gonna draw his hat. Cause they always have hats, right? Wizarding world. All right, one and two and across. I don't actually know what their hats look like other than the talking one. So we're gonna do, we're gonna do, oh, how do I, I don't even know. We're just gonna shade this in as if I know what I'm doing. It's a little hat. This is kind of dumb. All right, and then I'm gonna do like a, like a lightning bolt. Any idea which side of his head it's on? I don't remember. Look, it's a Harry Potter themed bookmark. Oh my gosh. Whoever thought of this must have been, you know, a genius. Thanks, Mom. <laughs> Here we go. So, again, I don't have my book on me, um, but I have my planner. So you can just stick that on. And now my planner is Harry Potter themed. Of course, you can do any drawing you want, any decoration you want. I think that that is up to your creativity. And you've also got this sweet um, paper with toilet paper rolls on it. Stick it on your fridge. Put it in a shadow box. Michaels sells them. Oriental Trading sells them. How do I know that? I don't know. Uh, just kidding. I work with them. Uh, yeah. So here are our crafts for today. I hope you enjoyed your time. My eyes are starting to fatigue from looking at all the screens. I actually have a really hard time reading things on screens now because my eyes are like so tired of looking at screens. So I find the arts and crafts really help give my eyes a break to look at something real. I did some research on it and it is really important to look at things that are real. Who would have thought, you know? Don't give your kids too many screens because you're going to end up with eyes that can't read anything anymore. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed your time. Uh, stay safe out there. Remember, there's, we're still going through a pandemic. Um, please feel free to keep protesting. Well, not that I can't tell you what to do, but I encourage you all to donate. Really donate to the causes that need it the most. Um, it is great to give thoughts and prayers, but also money is super helpful too. So thank you all for tuning in. I hope you have a, uh, as relaxing of a week as you can have. If 
you don't want to relax, get riled up, no. Fight the change. It's very important. Okay. All right. I'm sending off. Okay. <laughs> Good night.